Yes, my name is Annette Heslop. I am a director of Energy for All. I'm also a director of Baywind Energy Co-op as well. Um, I just want to talk about the grassroots level of um, producing a renewable energy co-op um, in the UK today. So I'll run through a little bit of background on Energy for All. We were created by um, some of the directors of Baywind Energy back in 2002 and our aims are to facilitate community ownership in renewable energy projects, develop community programs and provide an attractive ethical investment. Uh, we're a social enterprise, we're only a small social enterprise, but we do act as a, a, a non-profit distributing. Uh, any profits we do make, the cloud back into the company to try and create more co-ops, or we would uh, pay it back to the members uh, of, of, of the other co-ops, that each co-op has a share in Energy for All. Uh, we've, since 2002, we have created eight renewable energy co-ops. Um, the first one after Baywind was West Mill Wind Farm. That's down in uh, Swindon, <coughs> down Oxford area. Uh, five 1.3 megawatt turbines. Uh, as you can see, 2,319 members. Um, next one was Fens, uh, a site in Spalding in Lincolnshire. We have two, two megawatt turbines out of uh, uh, a site of eight. Uh, then we teamed up with a very good developer in Scotland, Fault Renewables, and we now have four sites in Scotland. You've got Boyndy Wind Farm in um, Aberdeenshire, Isle of Skye, uh, Great Glen. I mean, some of these wind farms are tiny. Boyndy's got 12 turbines, Isle of Skye's got 12. Great Glen, I think, has 26 uh, 2.3 megawatt turbines, and Kilbrower has about 27. Um, then in 2010, we created um, a unique co-op, Energy Prospects. We felt we needed to try and push um, more 100% community owned rather than relying on developers. Uh, so we put it out to the members and they put the money where the mouth was and we raised about a million pounds in, in about two months. Now Energy Pro Prospects is just to work on developing projects to the planning stage because this is the difficulty we have in this country. So once you've got planning, uh, then we would then create a new co-op so that co-op would own the actual site, you know, the, the, the turbines themselves. Uh, and then our latest offer uh, is Drumlin Wind Energy Co-op. We're looking to build five single turbines on five separate sites in Northern Ireland. Uh, we've all got the planning permits in place and we've produced a share of a document. This is here. If anybody's interested, we have a stand in Cooperation Street. Uh, if you want to pick up a brochure, that would be great. Um, so you can see, I listened to the other courts, you know, like from Germany and um, the other court from Rescoop, where you're talking about 80,000 members, 40,000 members. I mean, in total, we've got 7,500, which is small, but it is a start. Uh, and we'd like to see this grow. We'd, we'd love to have 40,000 members. <coughs> um, in total, we have raised about £18 million, which again is quite an achievement for a small social enterprise in the UK. Um, as I said, we support two types of projects, 100% community owned, or sometimes we have to uh, team up with a developer. Um, I'd rather offer something to the local people in the area rather than nothing at all. Um, otherwise, the big developers, they take all the money. Um, you know, Fault Renewables, Italian owned. I'm sure some of that money is going to make its way back to Italy. No offence to Italians, but, you know, we'd like local people here to own their local energy. Um, and then once we've created the co-ops and the, the sites operating, we then have to look after the members. Uh, so we also offer administration services to each co-op. Uh, so we run a database, we wrote our own database because there wasn't any out there that met our, our needs. Um, because it's quite demanding looking after the members. Um, they move address, uh, they, don't, they don't tell you, you've got to track them down. Um, some of them unfortunately even die. Uh, so you've got to deal with all their shares and move it on to the beneficiaries, etc. And we also monitor and manage wind farm sites as well. So we actually see it from the conception of a project right through to operating a wind farm uh, on a daily basis. So I'm just going to have a look at two uh, case studies. Bay Wind, obviously the iconic uh, co-op, established in 1996. 
Uh, we have six turbines on two sites in Cumbria, five at Harlech Hill and one at Haverick. As you can see, these are uh, small machines, 500 kilowatts, 600, um, because they've been up and running for about 15, 16 years now. Now, the development risk was taken by um, some Swedish developers. Uh, the landowner identified the site was a, a good site for wind. He could only get Swedish people involved over here to, to de develop the site for him. Uh, and the capital risk to build the site was also taken by the um, Swedish developers. So back in 96, 97, uh, Bay Wind raised 1.2 million through a public share offer, Sim similar to this, uh, you know, a, a nice glossy brochure. And we bought two turbines. Um, but then the Swedish developers found it a bit hard going over here to get planning consent. So they went back home. Um, so then we approached the co-op bank. We then borrowed another million pounds and we uh, completed the purchase. So we were able to own all the five turbines at Harlech Hill. Uh, and then during 1998, we also teamed up with um, uh, another uh, renewable energy company, that's uh, the Triodos Renewables Fund. Uh, they have four turbines at Havrick, but they sold one to Baywind Co-op. So that enabled us to expand our portfolio. Uh, and the other thing we're looking at now, because the turbines at Harlech Hill are getting to be about 15, 16 years old, we're working with another developer to repower. So that means we're going to take the five existing turbines down and replace them with um, 2.3 megawatt turbines. However, it's proving um, uh, pretty hard to get through the planning system at the moment. Uh, <coughs> next case study is Westmill Wind Farm. Now this one is the first 100% community owned wind farm in the southeast of England. And they've got five 1.3 megawatt turbines uh, down in Oxford. Uh, the development risk there was taken by the farmer. He spent about 150k trying to get the planning permits in place. Fortunately, it took him 14 years to do so. so th things run rather slowly <laughs> in the UK. Um, he then approached, uh, I mean, we knew of uh, the, the landowner, uh, you know, going back a good 10 years before then. Um, so we approached him and says, look, you need to run it as a co-op. Uh, so we created Westmill Wind Farm ran another one of these uh, and raised um, you know four and a half million to do so however you know there were problems along the way halfway through um, raising the finance the turbine manufacturer said oh, I'm sorry those five turbines you've ordered you can't have them anymore we haven't got them so we're half halfway through raising the money what do we do well we carried on we had to fall back we had a, a, a different turbine that we could use um, so we gave money back because we were oversubscribed, so we only needed enough for, for the um, uh, second uh, type of turbine. Um, and then about nine months later, a regional turbine manufacturer comes back and says, oh, you know those turbines you wanted? We've got them now. However, they've gone up 40% in price. <laughs> <laughs> now, we wanted the bigger turbine for more output. So we went back to the members and said, you remember when we give you some money back about six months ago, can we have it back in? Uh, so we not only got the money we gave back, we actually got more money back in. Within the space of about three weeks, we raised a million pounds. Uh, so, you know, all testament to the members of uh, West Mill, they, they were really keen to get this built. So eventually, uh, we erected the turbines January 2008, and began generating in February. We were very lucky in January to build a wind farm because you generally get bad weather. We had a week of calm weather. Um, if you go on West Mills wind, Winds uh, website, you'll see pictures of uh, erecting turbines in, in the dark with floodlights. They were trying to get the last turbine up before, because the very next day we were expecting wind. So, uh, you know, all well and good to Siemens for doing so. So a couple of quick pictures. The one on the left is West Mill Wind Farm. Um, this was taken on their open day. We had 650 members turned up to this open day uh, and it was fantastic. Uh, lovely weather, the wind was blowing, the turbines were turning and the birds were singing. So it was a <laughs> fantastic day for everybody. And then the one on the right is Harlech Hill. Uh, that's our site manager in the middle with probably two of our youngest visitors. Both these sites have seen uh, several thousand 
visitors uh, to each wind farm. Um, only two weeks ago we took 38 Italians around the Hallock Hill site because uh, they're keen to replicate the same in their country. So what's involved in creating a renewable energy co-op? Um, the first thing we like to do is create your core community group. Uh, we'd go out, we'd advertise, or we'd go to like Friends of the Earth contact, uh, any other like-minded individuals who are interested in um, producing community-owned renewable energy. Then the next thing you need to do is you need to identify your <coughs> sites and your projects. What are you going to build? Where are you going to build it? Uh, then create your co-op because you need to establish a vehicle. You need to go out and say we're whatever named co-op and we want to produce wind turbines or solar PV in, in your community. So then you try and recruit um, a local board. You, we have a board of between five and seven people uh, on each co-op because they, in the end, they, they run the co-op. Uh, before you get your members on board, they are in charge of um, producing um, the project. So the next thing, you're looking at feasibility of your project. If you're looking at wind, I mean, I'm talking a lot about wind because that's what we've done in the past. You need to look at your wind speed, um, what sort of output can you expect, how close are you to the grid? Uh, we talked about the DNOs before. If you're too far away from the grid and it costs, it's too expensive, big tick in the box, uh, crossing the box, you're not going to develop that site. Because until we you know, do more with the DNOs and get them to um, you know, really give some sort of acceptance that a community wind farm should be out there and should be built. Um, but I, I don't think we're going to get there. We're a, a long way off with the DNOs. Uh, the next thing